ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel in honor of the draft that's coming up in a few weeks i thought we should go revisit the 2021 draft now in my opinion this is one of the best draft classes in recent years it was really amazing i thought let's revisit it and let's redo it at how it, the order should have went based off of right now now there are some picks in the top 10 that are like whoa but there are some really good picks in the top 10 this draft class was honestly kind of stacked for the first round i really like this draft class i posted some on twitter about it so it got me thinking let's redo this as in we already know what these players are gonna be so let's redo it start from the first pick so let's get into it so with the first overall pick the jacksonville jaguars took trevor lawrence in the draft in my opinion it would still be trevor lawrence in this draft i feel like the jacks would not take that back and t law would go number one overall to the jacks i mean trevor's rookie season was very concerning i'm not gonna lie we all watched it it was all very concerning but his second year that he came out with doug peterson as his head coach instead of urban meyer it's been very convincing that trevor is gonna definitely be a top 10 quarterback he's going to be an amazing quarterback in the nfl this year 4,000 yards 25 touchdowns 95 passer rating and 66 percent completion man there are some games where this man was absolutely balling this year wonderful game by trevor i just love seeing him play wonderful player by trevor I think that there are some more players on here that maybe could go debate number one, but in the Jags situation right now, I feel like if they didn't have Trevor Lawrence, they'd be in a terrible situation. So based on the situation that the Jags would be in if they didn't have T-Law, I think that's why he would go number one again, because there are some new, there are some good players on here, don't get me wrong, but I give you like, you put like one of these good players on here, but you remove T-Law, it's just like, it's just like, I don't think they would do it. I think that they would take T-Law again. Like I said, amazing player, number one overall pick stays the same. The Jets took Zach Wilson here. They would take Micah Parsons if they did this again. Why, you might ask? Well, the Jets are in still need of a QB to this day because, you know, Aaron Rodgers' trade hasn't happened yet. Why do I think they would take Micah Parsons? A player like Micah Parsons, this is the generational talent right here that you just don't pass on. Last year, having 42 tackles, 13 sacks, three forced fumbles. This man has been balling out since he went to the league. You do not pass on a player like this. And if I was the Jets and we had to redo this, I just say, you know what? We're going to take this generational defensive player and just drop the quarterback. We'll figure it out another day. Because Micah Parsons, this man is a dog. He's a baller. One of the best defensive players in football. And this is only year two. We can just keep getting better. Next year's year three eight for him. I'm expecting huge things from Micah Parsons. Defensive player of the year maybe for him next year. I don't know. We'll look at it though. But like I said, I don't think the Jets, if they could redo this, would pass on this generational defensive player like Micah Parsons. At number three, the San Francisco 49ers took... Trey Lance and here in this universe they don't take Trey Lance they take Jamar Chase one of the most explosive receivers in the NFL now why do I think this well in this universe you already know what these players are going to be like I said so Jamar Chase if he's going to be this good they might as well just leave Jimmy G at quarterback and not even think about a Trey Lance Jamar Chase this year by the way had 80 87 receptions thousand yards nine touchdowns this man was an absolute beast and last year his rookie year he won offensive rookie of the year i don't know if you'd be the i think he would still be the same without burrow i mean a lot of us already knew chase no matter what team he went to is going to be a big help i think with jimmy g at quarterback if they were to keep jimmy g or maybe get somebody else like i said chase would definitely be wide receiver number one he'd be the explosive wide receiver still still be an amazing wide receiver i think that makes most sense for san francisco to go get him instead of redrafting a quarterback well, i mean they had jimmy g and he played like jimmy g wasn't bad they were just trying to figure out a younger quarterback situation which i don't blame them for doing but like i said i like the same thing with the jets i don't think the san francisco 49ers could just pass on a generational wide receiver like this so at number four, Atlanta originally took Kyle Pitts. Now, Kyle Pitts, I know he had kind of a mid-second year with the quarterback carousel that they kind of were doing this year. But I don't think if they redid this, they still need a quarterback right now. I think Justin Fields would go perfect for them at number four. Why? Justin Fields last year, I know he only had 2,000 throwing yards, 17 touchdowns. But guess what? That man rushed for 1,000 yards. So he kind of, he was getting close to the 4,000 yard mark in total yards. I know he wasn't the best throwing quarterback last year. He didn't have a lot of weapons. The offensive line was kind of bad. But Justin Fields, a super electric quarterback. We saw in some plays last year, this man is super electric. And I think him in Atlanta right now, it would be perfect because they actually have better pieces, in my opinion, than the Bears do currently. I mean, just look at Atlanta. They got Drake London. They got they got some good pieces currently. So I think him in Atlanta, they, Atlanta should have taken him if they redraft this because then they have their quarterback of the future. 
I like Desmond Ritter, but I feel like Justin Fields would be an upgrade over Desmond Ritter. So I think that they wouldn't even think about taking Kyle Pitts since they need a quarterback in this situation. So that's why I believe Justin Fields would go, like I said, super electric quarterback. With at number five, with Jamar Chase gone, the Bengals are on the clock. And in my opinion, they'd pick Rashawn Slater, who is a Charger currently. He'd be a Bengal Y. Well, with Jamar Chase gone originally, they would probably pick Panene Sewell, the O lineman. But in my opinion, the best O lineman in his draft class has been Rashawn Slater. He has a PF, gr PFF grade of 84, which is amazing for. Online, then I don't know much about online, but all I know is Rashawn Slater has been an insane online, and I'm pretty certain he got some rookie of the year votes last year. Very shame that he got hurt this year. This man was actually born, he's a dog at the offensive line position, one of the best offensive linemen that I've seen. He only has one penalty, and apparently, he's only allowed one sack. That's like just amazing. I know he didn't play much this year, but like I said, last year's man was an all around dog. I can't wait to see him back this year. But like I said, with Jamar Chase not being a thing, they did need help with the O line, so they'd probably pick Rashawn. Sean Slater to help that old line. At the sixth pick, the Jalen Waddle was selected by the Dolphins, and I'm pretty certain if they did it again, Jalen Waddle would be selected once again. Jalen Waddle this year, 75 receiving yards. I mean, receptions, my bad guys, receptions, 1,300 receiving yards and eight touchdowns. He's really helped this Dolphins offense transform itself. It's honestly been amazing watching him and Tua and, and Tyreek Hill all ball out together. But I think they'd keep the same pick. I mean, looking at the players that are left on the board, I was like, well, Waddle's really done this good job and helping this offense he's been an amazing receiver this year i think they would just keep it the same and just go ahead and keep waddle again waddle is definitely one of the most underrated receivers in the league i would feel like this man would instantly probably be a number one on lots of teams but he's a number two because you know gotta deal with tyree kill because him and that duo is just crazy just looking at the rest of the players i'm like yeah i think miami would be like yeah we might as well just keep the guy that's been helping us this offense helping to him might as well just keep him and keep rolling with Jalen Waddle. I love Jalen Waddle, amazing receiver. I think the Dolphins keep that pick with Jalen Waddle at receiver at number six. At number seven, the Detroit Lions originally se selected Panay Sewell. They pretty much fell in the draft. No one expected him to fall this far, but he ended up falling to number seven to the Detroit Lions. Now, I think the Lions would take Patrick Sertan. Why you might ask? Well, corner has kind of been a problem for the Lions they just traded Jeff Okuda not too long ago when I say not too long ago I mean as I'm recording this like three hours ago but Patrick Sertan is looking like he's going to be a great cornerback in the NFL currently he has 46 tackles one force from with two interceptions so he's honestly has been playing great in Denver he's been probably a, he's been probably one of the best corners if you look at his stats and really look at his game he's he's probably the best corner to come out of this draft class him and JC Horn but I think that, like I said, they need a corner. Patrick Sertan putting him in there. He can be that star player at that corner position for the Broncos instead of having Panay Sewell just an offensive lineman. Even though, don't get me wrong, Panay Sewell's a great offensive lineman. I feel like they'd rather have that corner position with a high-ended corner. One of the best, like I said, one of the best in the draft class all around. Amazing corner. I think they'd rather do this than end up having Sewell. All right, so originally the Carolina Panthers took J.C. Horn. Now, Panther fans might get a little mad at me, but I would personally think that they would take Mac Jones if they look at their situation now. I know, but remember, this is like before the number one pick and all they traded up for it. Mac Jones, they clearly have needed a quarterback. They went through Baker Mayfield last year, P.J. Walker. Quarterback Mac Jones, they wouldn't be worried about a quarterback right now. Maybe. Me, in my opinion, Mac played well his rookie year. The reason why he was rookie of the year. I know he had a down year this year, you know, only not even 300, 3,000 yards, only 14 touchdowns. Yes, I know he had a down year. But just look at the coaching staff. And just look at the Pats all weapons, and then you understand why he had it down here this year. It, it was ridiculous. I hate what the Patriots did to this man this year. But look at Mac last year. He was decent. Man, this man could actually, I feel like he's not, Mac Jones is not going to be a bust. He can actually be the key to some in New England if he just gets the right weapons and the right coaching staff, in my opinion. So I think that Carolina would take him here so they have their quarterback as long as they get him the right weapons. Maybe they'd still have DJ Moore. If all this, this is kind of just a big what if at this point with all these picks. But like I said, I think that the Panthers would take Mac Jones. Like, remember, the number one pick stuff right now it doesn't count. This is just a big what if. I think they would have Mac Jones if they redid the draft. They draft Mac Jones so they would have their quarterback. And that's what I think about the Panthers. This one's kind of tricky to do for the Panthers because they just got the pick, number one pick and stuff. But like I said, I think that if we redid this, Mac Jones right here. This might sound a little controversial for this pick, but I have Kyle Pitts falling 
if this was redone, Kyle Pitts going to the Broncos. Originally, they would select Pat Sertan, but like I said, Pat Sertan isn't here in this universe. So here's my thing. I don't want Kyle, like, when I was doing this, I was like, there's no, like, when I was redoing this, I was looking at Kyle Pitts. It's like, where would I put Kyle Pitts? Because I'm like, he's a really good tight end. Like I said, I think he is a generational tight end. This year, he just, come on, did you see his quarterback, Marcus Mariota? And they had a rushing offense. Like, there was nothing you could do to Kyle Pitts. He was in a bad situation. Like, last year with Matt Ryan, he had a good year. He had some good games. I know he only got one touchdown, but, like, that's, 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 He's going to get better from here. I think with Desmond Ritter as his quarterback, it's going to be nice. I think Kyle Pitts is going to be nice next year. So I don't think the Broncos would take him here. Why? Well, like I said, Kyle Pitts, amazing tight end. But the fact that Sertan's gone, I could see them a possibility. Just I'm just going to mention J.C. Horn here could be a possibility that they take J.C. Horn instead of Kyle Pitts. I just felt like Kyle Pitts needs to get chosen somewhere because I feel like no way that Kyle Pitts falls this far down and this long because Kyle Pitts was a really hyped up tight end I mean he's a really good tight end so he has to deserve to get hyped up but I'm like there's no way this man falls because I'm only like I said I'm doing the top 12 like it says in the title of this video I'm like there's no way because I was going down those I'm like there's no way this man falls below top 12 like that'd be crazy in my opinion for the with Kyle Pitts it's just my opinion though how I feel about Kyle Pitts so let me know what y'all think about this pick I think JC Horn I'm giving him the honorable mention here he would definitely be the number two for this but I think Pitts Pitts wouldn't fall like this but definitely JC Horn in a consideration for this at number 10, the Philadelphia Eagles originally picked Devonna Smith, and I think they would go ahead and pick Devonna Smith right back. This man is an absolute baller for the Philadelphia Eagles. A 1A, a 1B type wide receiver duo that they have with him and A.J. Brown this year. 95 receptions, 1,000 yards, 7 TDs. And this man really didn't get hot till the second part of the regular season, in my opinion, because it was all the A.J. Brown show at the beginning. But the second half, this man started to get hot, and he was going off. Every single week, Devonna Smith was going hot, off, and nuts. So I think the Eagles would just use the same pick on him and be like oh let's go get that guy that's been killing it for us let's go get him because like let's be honest Devon a. smith all around dog one of the best receivers one of the best receivers in the league i think Devon a. smith and jalen water both two very underrated receivers in the league because they are foreshadowed by their other component tyree hill and aj brown so i think the eagles will do the thing here and just take Devon a. smith again because like i said he's super underrated receiver 1a 1b like i said Waddle would probably be a wide receiver one on a different team that didn't have AJ Brown on it. So like I said, Devonta Smith, love him. Eagles use same pick on him. All right, so the Bears end up taking Justin Fields at pick 11. And now with them needing a quarterback at this position because they don't have Justin Fields, in my opinion, they would go ahead and take Trey Lance. Trey Lance is probably the most unproven quarterback out in this draft. Why do you ask? Well, it's complicated between Trey, between the injuries. He was supposed to be the starter this year. He got hurt. Yeah, it's been kind of complicated with Trey. But I honestly do not think Trey Lance is a bad quarterback. I think he actually could pan out if he were to be the starter next year once again to give this man one more chance. That Because I think Trey Lance isn't bad. I think he played decent in the games that he subbed in. I think he can be decent. But this is another story. This would be a whole other story in Chicago with basically these injuries might not happen in chicago because same plays might not happen so maybe trey lance pans out we never know we'll never know but i think trey lance with them needing a quarterback like i said with justin fields not being on the board anymore trey lance is the way to go for the chicago bears at this pick slot because they just need a quarterback and it would make the most sense and because i feel like yeah i just feel like nothing else on the board like they would just be struggling with with the quarterback right now it'd be looking terrible for them at qb so that's the only reason why i think they would have to take Trey and the other quarterbacks left on this list are not like they're gonna take Davis Mills like come on now we're they're, they're, they're gonna take Trey all right this one also might be a little controversial but to me it makes the most sense so instead of Micah Parsons being there the the Cowboys have to go ahead and take somebody in my opinion they take one of the most sleeperest picks in the draft that were slept on Amon Ross St. Brown this year having 100 receptions 1,000 yards and six TDs all around baller year for St. Brown. St. Brown last year he broke out baller. I think this would work out. Help Dak get another weapon besides CD. They'd probably need to add some to that defense. I'm not gonna lie. But like I said, hey man, St. Brown for wide receiver. I don't think it would I think it would be a good idea for the Cowboys to go ahead and snag him. There are other picks that I think they could look at on the defensive wise and offensive wise, but I feel like St. Brown would make the most sense. CD and St. Brown. Oh my god, that is an offense right there. You got two Two one, you got a one A and one B wide receiver right there, all around baller in St. Brown. Like I said, Michael Parsons not there no more because Michael Parsons is a 
he, he should have been taken away earlier in this draft, in my opinion. But Cowboys end up getting St. Brown. And that is my redraft for the top 12 picks. There is way more picks, but like I was like, yeah, we're only going to do 12 because I want to be it nice and short for y'all. I don't want to get too into this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe. Comment who y'all favorite NBA and NFL player is all time. I'd appreciate that. I love talking to y'all about sports. Uh, watch these two videos right here. One is about the playoff draw and who I think is going to break the playoff draw. And one is on the NBA finals. I think both are pretty good videos. I think y'all should watch them. I'll see y'all in the next one.